Hello and welcome. I'm Extension Beef Cattle Specialist Megan Van Emmen with Montana State University. And this webinar is going to be about the importance of microminerals for your beef cattle. So as previously shown in the general minerals uh, webinar, here are our trace mineral requirements represented as parts per million for our trace mineral requirements for our classes of cattle. One thing to remember is that there are no established bull requirements. Um, we typically use the growing and finishing cattle requirement for our bulls. Now, um, if we look at this table, we see that there are no established requirements for chromium or molybdenum, and that most of our requirements remain the same across all classes of cattle except for manganese. One thing to keep in mind is that a lot of our mineral supplements don't include cobalt uh, in their formulations. However, some do. Um, copper required at 10 parts per million across all classes of cattle. Uh, iodine, also one of those trace minerals that's not included in every uh, mineral formulation as a separate ingredient. And... Uh, Iron, not really included at all in any of our uh, trace mineral su supplements as a separate ingredient. This is typically uh, a requirement that is met by, by our feed ingredients for a cattle. Um, as we see here, 50 parts per million is the actual requirement for beef cattle. Um, however, most of our beef cattle are highly tolerant of large concentrations of iron. Uh, just due to our concentrations in the feed as well as water. Um, so they're very tolerant and they typically uh, take in more than 50 parts per million each day. Uh, manganese does uh, change requirements between our growing and finishing cattle and then our uh, cows, our breeding animals, um, which is 40 parts per million. And this is mainly due to its importance of uh, fetal formation as well as uh, general reproduction needs. Now, uh, selenium is a trace mineral that is highly variable across the state of Montana. Um, typically in the southwest portion of Montana, we consider that a selenium deficient area with the remainder being adequate or um, in that toxic range. And it is really easy to go from deficient in selenium to toxic. Uh, it's only needed at about t a tenth of a part per million. And we see our maximum tolerable concentration over here as two parts per million. Um, so very easy to go from deficient to toxic. So getting an analysis completed of your feeds for selenium or knowing whether you're in a selenium deficient or toxic or even adequate area can help you make those decisions on if selenium should be included uh, in your mineral supplement. Uh, zinc also uh, remains the same across all of our classes of cattle. Now, if we look at copper, so several uh, processes require copper. Um, the big one is that tissue pigmentation. That's our main one that we would see in a deficiency as um, black hided cattle uh, tend to lose their uh, hair quality and that, that hair becomes red in color, a uh, discoloration there. Um, but there are other ones such as uh, connective tissue development or uh, cellular respiration or bone formation. Um, and then with the connective tissue, we can also see some joint problems in those cattle that might have a copper deficiency. Um, copper is also an essential enzymatic cofactor for several metalloenzymes. Uh, lysyl oxidase is important in that connective tissue. Uh, we also have copper zinc superoxide dismutase, so also in the impacts on our antioxidant activity and several others. Now, copper requirements are set at 10 parts per million. However, it is pretty much impacted by iron, molybdenum, sulfur, uh, zinc, lead, cadmium, um, even protein sources can all influence our copper requirements. 
Um, the big ones that we focus mainly on are the iron, molybdenum, sulfur, and zinc. Those would impact our copper absorption rates for our beef cattle. So as mentioned during our general minerals information webinar, um, the optimal copper to molybdenum ratio should be between 2 to 1 to 4 to 1. This ensures that molybdenum is not uh, tying up all the copper within the rumen and allowing for some copper absorption for those requirements to be met. We can see a pretty wide range depending on your stage of production of that forage, as well as if it's a grass or legume, but somewhere they're usually in between six to 16 parts per million. However, most of our forages do fall below that 10 part per million um, requirement, especially during the grazing season. Now we typically don't see copper toxicity in uh, beef cattle, uh, but we can see it in sheep. One thing to keep in mind is to not feed your sheep your beef mineral due to the copper content of that mineral, and you can cause copper toxicity in those sheep. Now, the main copper deficiency symptom is not only that faded hair coat, but we can also see reproductive failure, um, which can be caused by anemia, hemorrhaging, um, defects in your red blood cell formation, and connective tissue formation during that early embryonic development. Now that faded hair coat is your typical symptom, you know, the red haired uh, tinge to those uh, black hided cattle. Um, one thing though to keep in mind is just because your black hided cattle have a red hair does not always indicate a copper deficiency. What I typically look for in that copper deficiency is that faded hair coat, but that hair is going to be very brittle, um, very, very rough. Um, it's not just going to look like a normal black hide with a little bit of a faded red tint to it. Um, we can also see the brittle bones as well as severe diarrhea and a reduction in immunity. So, where we typically see our copper deficiency is when forage uh, molybdenum increases above three parts per million and copper concentrations are below five parts per million. So always ensuring we're, we're meeting those copper requirements over what is included in our normal forages. Now, one thing to keep in mind is those molybdenum impacts on copper that I spoke of briefly. So typically when there are high molybdenum concentrations, um, we typically will start to see copper deficiency issues. That molybdenum begins to tie up the copper in the rumen and renders it um, unabsorbable and therefore causing a copper deficiency. So when we increase dietary molybdenum, we increase molybdenum in the liver and plasma, and therefore that increased dietary molybdenum also causes um, an increase in copper in the plasma because that molybdenum is tying up the copper in the rumen, therefore not being absorbed, and more copper must be released from the liver into the plasma to meet those copper demands, therefore reducing the copper liver concentrations. Now, molybdenum toxicity... Um, Symptoms are about the same as copper deficiency symptoms. It can also cause a reduction in crude protein uptake in the small intestine, and this has been shown in steers. Molybdenum toxicity is highly variable, and it's dependent on copper, zinc, sulfur, and other sulfur-containing amino acid uh, concentrations. So if copper and sulfur are adequate or are being fed at um, increased amounts, more molybdenum can be tolerated. We can also see an antagonistic effect of that sulfur coupling with molybdenum to also render copper unabsorbable within the rumen. Molybdenum toxicity is hard to distinguish between copper deficiency um, as well as then uh, molybdenum concentrations. Um, are highly variable in our forages and can range between 6.2 and 1,000 parts per million in our feedstuffs for our livestock. Um, therefore, 
it is hard to determine whether we're seeing a molybdenum toxicity um, or a copper deficiency problem. Uh, some cattle symptoms, such as scours, uh, anorexia, anemia, just loss of general body condition. Um, so those are things to keep an eye out for on top of your copper deficiency symptoms. Um, as little as five to six parts per million molybdenum and inhibit copper storage and produce those molybdenum toxicity um, symptoms. And if copper is also low in our feedstuffs and we're not meeting those requirements, less than two parts per million of molybdenum can cause those uh, molybdenum toxicity issues or copper deficiency symptoms. Now for manganese, um, its main purpose is for growth and reproduction. Um, this is probably the most important trace mineral for our reproductive processes. And as uh, manganese increases, we see an increase in manganese in our reproductive tissues, as well as another main uh, function is in skeletal cartilage formation um, in our livestock. We can also see as a deficiency um, impaired estrus in both swine and cattle. And one of the main functions for this impaired estrus um, is due to the fact that manganese plays a role in our corpus luteum functions. Uh, manganese also functions in sustaining lipid and glucose metabolism. It also is, plays a role as an antioxidant with a manganese superoxide dismutase with its main activity in the heart, as well as the biosynthesis of choline. Now deficiency, there are several which are impaired growth, um, some skeletal abnormalities, or depressed reproductive function, um, ataxia of newborn calves, and then those defects in lipid and carbohydrate metabolism. However, the likelihood of manganese deficiency is less than for cobalt, copper, iodine, selenium, and zinc because most of our grasses, uh, legumes, grains, and silages are adequate in manganese. Um, however, grazing livestock are most likely to be deficient just due to the grass maturity um, and lo loss of that leaf structure when those mature grasses are being fed. Now with selenium, um, it works very closely with vitamin E for our antioxidant formation. Uh, there's a very narrow tolerance range as I discussed previously. Um, it's very easy to go from deficient to toxic. Um, depending on uh, what the selenium concentrations are in our feedstuffs or supplements. And one uh, rule to keep in mind is that no prepared complete feed can contain more than 0.3 parts per million of selenium. And uh, mineral supplements can contain up to 120 parts per million selenium, but the total intake of selenium should not exceed three milligrams per head per day to ensure we do not see those toxic effects. Selenium deficiencies, the main one we will, we will see in livestock production is white muscle disease, which is a weakness. Usually those uh, newborn or young animals, uh, stiffness of the joints and muscle degeneration. Um, we'll also see decreased uh, blood pressure and a decrease in tongue function. So they're unable to nurse as well. Um, we see a lot of retained placentas in those cattle with the poor reproductive performance in those selenium deficient areas. And then due to that lack of antioxidant response, we have a reduction in our immune response of those animals. Now, selenium toxicity can have uh, several different symptoms. Um, the first being blind staggers. Uh, animals will wander around um, basically appearing to be blind. Um, you'll notice that they'll start to circle, they'll start to stagger around, perhaps get trapped in a corner of a pen. Um, one of the big ones is the sloughing of the hooves and hair. Um, the hair will start to slough off and then um, when it's extreme those hooves will start to slough as well. Um, and then just general birth defects of, of those cattle. Now for zinc, um, very important in our immune functions, as well as enzymatic reactions, uh, hoof 
uh, formation and stability, and then reproduction as well. Um, zinc plays a large role in DNA, RNA, and protein production. Um, typically our forages, grains, and proteins are all good sources, but having that test done um, for minerals can really help us narrow down on what type of mineral supplement we should be offering our cattle. Now, deficiency symptoms can include excessive salivation. We're going to see a rough hair coat. We're going to see some hair loss. Um, the big notable distinct um, deficiency symptom is mouth and nose lesions. Now as presented in the general minerals presentation, um, copper, zinc, and manganese play a large role in our reproductive processes. Um, several areas uh, for the female for copper, delayed estrus, um, embryonic death, delayed puberty, decreased ovulation, reduction in conception rates. For the male, decreased libido and spermatogenesis. For zinc, um, increased dystocia or abnormal estrus. For the male, uh, impaired growth, delayed puberty, reduced testicular size as well as libido. And then in manganese, um, we can see the increase in anestrous period, uh, increased abortion rates, decreased ovarian activity, um, all of this reducing our conception rates. And then in the male, uh, increase in abnormal sperm. But one thing to keep in mind is there are no set bowl requirements for our trace minerals. Uh, so don't forget about them in your mineral supplements. Uh, those minerals are very important for maintaining that bowl throughout the winter months and then through the breeding season um, to make sure your, your cows are, are bred uh, within that first cycle. So with that, I'm Megan Van Emmen, Extension Beef Cattle Specialist with Montana State University. Thanks and have a great day.